Now we're going to touch on row context here. Now row context I've found is where most people get confused in regards to uh, understanding how how DAX actually works and you know what the reason why I think that is is because I think row context in its name is actually quite com complicated and unnecessarily so now the way I think about row context is iterations iterating functions uh, and now when I went as soon as I made that distinction in my mind it made a huge amount more sense in terms of what was actually going on in the calculation engine now, just as a recap, there are three types of context. You've got the evaluation context, and you've got filter and row context. Now, DAX, any DAX calculation works in a two-step process. Evaluation context always goes first, and then it branches out into either filter context or row context, depending on what function you write. Now, row context uh, is all about iterating. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of examples, and hopefully this will help in your understanding of what row context actually does in the back end. So if we just recap what we're doing here, this is this is filter context. This is this is being calculated via filter context because it's a simple aggregation. It sums up in this specific case the entire column, quantity column, after every filter has been or, or the initial filters have been put in place. So in this case the initial filter is product one and uh, after product one is filtered on the sales table, we then go and sum up every quantity, every amount that's been sold, and we get 165. Now, I'm going to show you that you can get exactly the same result here, but in, but calculated in a very different way. So, I'm just going to I'm just going to create a new measure, and I'm going to go quantity quantity sold iteration, and I'm going to use an iterating formula. Now, uh, an iterating function is things like sum x, average x, min x, count x, and there's a, there's a whole 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 number of these things. Now, if I go sum x like this, it asks me to put in a table. So I'm going to go, I'm going to put in the sales table, and then it asks me for an expression here. But what I can do is I can actually just put the quantity column. I'm going to push enter. Now, this function, if you think about it, is quite different to this function. But what you'll see when I drag it in is it's, you get exactly the same result, right? Now, the reason what, why we're getting exactly the same result is because ultimately it is the same calculation. It's just being calculated a different way. This is being calculated via row context, while the total quantity sold is via filter context. Let's now go through step by step how this is calculated. Now, first you've got to remember the, the initial valuation context, which in this case is product one, nothing changes there, that's the first step to the process, but now we're branching out into row context, right? And via row context, we're iterating through every single row in the table that we specify. So in this case, we're specifying the sales table, and then if we jump to the sales table, we're then going to go and look at every single row in that table in the quantity column. And so what it's doing is it goes, um, so it filters for the first of, uh, or for the initial evaluation context, which, which would be product of one, so that would be determined by whatever uh, is filtered here. And then it goes to this row, and it goes, it counts up, it counts up this row, and then counts up this row, and then counts up this row, and this row, and this row, and so on and so forth. And then every time it, it hits a row, it then goes and saves the result into memory. So just think about over on the side here, that every row, it then goes and saves that row into memory, saves that row into memory, saves that row into memory, so on and so forth. And then right at the end, after it reaches right to the bottom of the table, it then goes and does a uh, evaluation of all of all of those results that are saved into memory. And it, and it will do the whatever calculation you ask of it. So in this case, it's a sum x. In another case, it might be an average x, it could be a min x, count x, so on and so forth. And now you're probably thinking, well, why? Why, why, why would we ever use row context or an iterating function? Well, because inside an iterating function, you can do far more complex things like this. You can you could you can write some pretty you can write some very advanced logic inside of here. So in this case, we could go sum x uh, sale, but instead of um, this quantity, we might want to go we might want to we might want to times this by 
uh, to the tax rate or something like that. So in this case, um, our tax rate might be 15% or something like that. So I'm just going to go quantity times 1.15. Well, this is probably this is probably better to do on a revenue example, um, but let's let's just say let's just say we had um, we, well let's just times it by two as an, as an example. So in this case we're we're writing some more advanced logic. So I'm going I'm jumping to the sales table. Then for every row in the sales table, I'm going quantity times by two, and you'll see now that the same process, the same calculation process is occurring, and we're getting different results. And then you can, but the, but it, and it's all to do because for every single row we're writing some different logic. So we're going to every single row in the quantity column, but then we're for every single row timesing it by two, and it gets saved into memory every single row. And then at the end of that, we do a sum. And then you can write different things in here, like if logic. You can write uh, switch logic. You can write you can write so much advanced logic in here. Uh, and so there's there's heaps and heaps of examples of where you where it's better to use an iterating function or row context to go and do a calculation than an aggregation function and filter context. So I'm going to round off um, the explanation for this now, but I just want to recap all of the uh, key things about um, context. So remember, every calculation in DAX works via a two-step process. The first step is always the evaluation context. It matters so much what the evaluation context is. Once you understand what the evaluation context is for any individual result, DAX then branches out into two different uh, ways it can calculate something. It can either calculate it via filtered context or row context. Now, it will choose which context to go to depending on what formula you write. So if you write a simple aggregation formula, it will then go and uh, calculate it via filter context. If you write a uh, an iterating function like sumx, then it will go calculate the formula via um, by, via row context. Now, not to overcomplicate things, but you can actually have multiple contexts in the same function. Now, that's when you're getting slightly more advanced in DAX, but before you get there, you really have to understand this stuff. Um, what just what context is in its simplest form, and and that's basically that's the main thing that I want to review uh, in this course. But um, but understanding these things is absolutely crucial as you learn DAX and want to do more advanced work. Because when you start writing really advanced DAX formula, you have multiple contexts working at the same time, and you need to understand what each individual part of that formula is doing to get the result that you're actually receiving.